All right, and we are back with the Pale Beyond. Week 22. Captain Shaw, personal log. The crew settled down for the long winter. It will be many months before the canopy is removed, and further travel across the ice will be a possibility. The winter. The crew will be here for quite some time. The winter is long and cold and carries out in complete darkness. One can lose track of the days. Men are known to go mad under these conditions. The crew is tough. They have fared worse already. The crew may see this as a break from their work. The crew is tough. They have fared worse already. To have braved the dangers of a shipwreck and the ice of creatures set to kill and maim, the cold and dark are but another challenge that the crew are sure to overcome. Curtin Hammond. Before the winter set in, the navigator and the engineer came to blows in public amongst the crew. Drastic measures were taken in order to put a stop to the conflict. Tensions were high, this should not hang over either man's head. A professional disagreement turning uncivil is not unheard of, particularly in high pressure situations. Both men still carried the crew's best interest at heart, and tensions seemed to have calmed since this incident. The coldest part of the world has now entered its coldest stage. In the winter, even words and time can freeze over. The doctor is likely to have his hands full in the coming months, dealing with frostbite among the crew. Only hope the young man is prepared for such task. Enter the canopy. Scouting post. Okay, so we can still... send people out. Interesting. I mean, never hurts. He's probably going to be like extremely frozen when he gets back, but that's okay. It's only minus 46. Let's enter the canopy. Holy moly, what a gnomes and grips. Runt and Nutley, Mr. Gloss and Kasha, Wizley, York the Third, and Flick. Well, first off. Let's just make sure that we pet all the puppies. Okay, the furnace. Oh, well, trying to stay warm, are you? Yeah, well, we need you guys in here to do that. And then we need to make sure that we actually do this this time. Unlike last time... Alright, lots of freezing. Like, I, I'd like to get up to... I mean, these are better for hoosh, but... Maybe we start doing the fish. At least up to 50, right? 50 is where we want. Got anything for the hoosh? Yeah, penguins. Lots of penguins. And one more. Or do we take one off and do... Like that. Or maybe two off. 36. 51. Yeah, we'll do that. It's only one malnourished. Could be worse. Okay. We also have a request him. But first, let's talk to everybody. We'll be holed up in here for quite some time. I. At least there's less work on our plates. Should be careful with lamplight. Wouldn't be hard to set the camp be a light. We certainly wouldn't want to be trapped underneath. Gleamy one, aren't you? Sorry, just cautious. Look at this. It's like we're under one big tent. Yes, I suppose. So no more hunting then. For the foreseeable future, yes. Alright, here's hoping we have enough food to last us. Yes, let's. Well, we're still going to be doing some hunting. Under the canopy. It's almost cozy. Ignore that it's colder than ever. Yes. Uh... What I wouldn't 
give to have a nice flask of hot cocoa at a time like this. Yeah, why didn't you mention it? Oh well, best save for home, eh? You hold up here for a while, at least it means some rest finally. I say that now, but you'll miss the chance to stretch your legs before too long. Most likely, but for now I'll embrace the quiet. You hear those winds? Nothing quiet about the winter, my friend. Also, nothing quiet about being stuck with you. Ha! True. Nice. Where's the beasties? Earning their rest, something may have, they may make a habit of in the coming weeks. Ah, and you're finally afforded a break from them. Only seeking a modicum of heat. Get used to that too, long winter ahead. Indeed. Um, where are we at in terms of loyalty? Okay. Basically where we need to be. Got it. Enter the request tent. Hammond and Junior. Alright. Well, Captain, sun won't be getting up for a while. Welcome to our new home. Aye, this canopy ain't pretty, but she'll do us right. Better than being stuck out in that blizzard. That I believe we can all agree on. Strong one, aye. Worse than any I've seen. We'll have to keep an eye out for rips in the outer canopy. Don't want the heat seeping out. Or the cold ripping in. You see a single hole, you grab whoever you can to fix it. Best we heed their warnings, Captain. That tarpaulin is old and clearly seen better days. Oh, Captain, I hope you are becoming accustomed to our new setup. It will be some time before we can leave this canopy. 21 weeks, I assume you've been keeping track of the time? It's been 21 since we first set sail. A few more weeks until rescue, correct? Yes. Which will be long, and but I feel it won't feel as such. Even thoughts can freeze out here. I think the weeks will pass before you even know it. Still, been in command for quite some time now. It has made for interesting observation at the least. I've been making judgments, I take it. Templeton flicks through the pages of his notebook. I still believe it was unwise to claim Hunt had abandoned the crew, no matter how truthful it seemed to be. Just to disparage the man's character did no favors for you amongst the sailors. You're right, I shouldn't have spoken a certainty. Um, I didn't say anything that wasn't true. Yes, that was a mistake. Templeton flicks through the rest of his pages. Disappointed by your refusal to take action against Stoke and his music, leaving room for such open disrespect to your authority, you look now you look weak and ineffectual. Germany is free to play his music. Better weak than a tyrant. I'm not here to abuse authority. Not abuse. Of um, force. Templeton flicks through the pages of his notebook. I must commend you for your action during the incident with the leopard seal. Your cool head and preparedness meant we were able to avoid disaster. Kudos. It'll be a long time before winter clears, but when it does, we'll be closing in on our rescue point, which is the last known location of the Viscount, if you may recall. Um, I almost forgotten of it. The mission is long in the past now. Do you think we can still find it? At this stage, it's impossible for anything to be certain. Hmm, I wonder. Do you still hope the Viscount? No matter. We've spoken enough. Now, back to our work. Thanks, Templeton, for that fantastic go. Is that the same compass you carried in your third film? Indeed it is. Surprised you were able to pick it up, pick up on those details. Well, I have seen them quite a few times. My family purchased a print of Through the White Waste for private screenings. So I'm quite accustomed to it all. Through the White Waste. Har, you must have been this tall when that film came out. Maybe shorter. That canvas pack of yours. That must be 30 years old by now. I, I know to keep my equipment well maintained. You're the same, aren't you? Of course, I'd never let my trusty camera even get scratched. You know, I barely had a budget for that first film. Most thought the idea of was set for disaster. I had to get sponsorship um, of tinned beans to even get that expedition off the ground. I remember those ad adverts. Newspapers ran them for quite a while, in fact. I had some newspaper clippings of, for research, building a portfolio. I think one of those adverts is in this folder. Why would you need so much research? Seems a bit much for one expedition. Well, this is for something else. And that is, well, it's something shameful to admit, but... I keep record of some historical figures that I have hopes on one day. Well, writing a biography on. 
biography. Yes, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'd like to prepare for projects that are in the realm of possibility, maybe. Har, I'd like to see that historical figure, eh? I'd say you fit the criteria. Flattering, but it does make me sound old, Har. It's, it's not untrue. <laughs> um. Yeah, we want to... Freezing and freezing. Fre freezing. You'll be fine. Malnourished. But no one's actually... Freezing. I just want to make sure no one is... Okay. Um... Frostbitten. Um, use the scientists to cook up medical comforts. Yeah, they're both. Can't do that today, unfortunately. Um, what do we do then? Like, I'd like to go hunt those with... Just right there. They're right there. It'll be fine. We can shoot them all. And that's it. That's all we need to do. We don't need to do much. Right? Right. Um, feeding people is fine. Feed the furnace. It's like, I'd like to get this up so we can... There. 70. I think that means we have to do one more. Wait, what? Seventy-nine. There we go. Because we wanted to get up to three, right? Let's see. We'll see how this works because people may be coming back dead. You can choose who to spend your evening with. Repair a hole in the canopy. I mean... Requires four people. Do we have four people? I guess we do. They set to work. Nutley Grimley. Two Johns and that guy. Cordella and Templeton. Do I only get to choose one set of people? Nutley and Grimly, maybe? I don't know. Thinking of going for a stroll? Hmm? What? You're staring at the exit for a while there. Oh, uh, right. You alright? Ah, uh, yes, um, it's gonna be a long winter, isn't it? Should be. And the food we have now will last us, right? What are you getting at? I, well, nothing. At least scurries off, returning to his tent. Hmm. See that, Shaw? Something's up with the doctor. Don't like it. I agree. Oh, so we can just talk to everybody. Okay. Arf, arf! Arf! Miss Cordell, would you be able to calm that thing down? I'm attempting to make note of the day's work. The move has left Stanberry overstimulated, with nowhere to take them bored. How long before the creature tires itself out? A pack down can remain active for several hours without taking a rest and then it will calm down perhaps then another is likely to act out again is anyone to have their work done in their presence you grow used to it learn to focus your mind focus on my duties at all time thank you very much you should have no issue arf <laughs> agreed my captain we're set in for quite a few weeks i'll have to find something good to pass the time all sports are out of the question considering this circumstance Perhaps we can share stories of exhibitions past. I've quite a few up my sleeve. Sure, that'd be nice, Kurt. Love to hear some of your tales. Be just spiffing. We may be here for quite some time. But I get through them at a reasonable pace. Wouldn't want to waste every story and I have in a single evening, would I? Well, let me get back to your work for now. How do you say this one? Acceleration. You said this was a simple book. You certainly picked an 
is an interesting time to start reading. I bet. It's too dark to see anything most of the time. I brought on the need to learn. I'm going to be strong forever. Wailing work will dry up. So we've got time to learn something else. It's not wrong. It's always time to learn something. Let's check this out. Nice, we can get up to that 75 range. Um, okay. The long winter continues. Okay, they're just freezing from the sled hunt. That I can deal with. I can deal with people being freezing. That is less good. So th those three for sure need to be healed in the tent. Okay, so three people in the tent, not bad. I mean, two of them being the scouts, not great. That's fine, though. We, we can do this. We can survive, right? There's such a thing. Okay, first off. Mr. Templeton, you wouldn't happen to have a spare pen, would you? It's so cold. The ink my own froze up. I'm afraid I have the same issue. Blast it. I'll have to warm it up by the furnace, then. How's the mutts doing? Overstimulated, bored, cramped. Then we'll grow used to it in time. What's the state of the boiler? Cramped, but it works. Nobody's dying. Good to hear. But I heard one howling through the night. Stanbury? Doubt that. Stanbury is markedly well behaved. Low bar for those animals. Better behave than most of this crew. Again, low bar. <laughs> this is not wrong. I've had to make a more concentrated effort to track the days as of late. By my estimate, we're not even a third of the way through. Yes, I wonder if there will indeed be rescue waiting for us at the end. Harriet, now isn't the time for doom and gloom. Of course, of course, but I can't help think of the Viscount. The Viscount? Yes, I'm certain they expect rescue to arrive as well. Hmm, I don't think anyone's still there. Mate, I'm losing track of the days. You're not alone there. You believe we've been holed up here for three weeks already? Four weeks, actually. You're joking. Afraid not. Aww. Oh. You notice anything about the dock lately? Since winter started, he seemed off. More than usual. Aye. I think we should have words. Okay. So, first off. We need to feed the hoosh pot. Feed, feed the hoosh pot. Oh, these aren't the right seals. Darn. I was hoping these were the freezing ones. Okay. Two. Three. Four. Five. And one seal. Okay. And we for sure need that, so you you're just there. Nice. Okay. Um and then we need to feed the furnace with whatever the heck we can. Two, three, four, like that maybe for now. Okay, at least it's something there. We'll we'll do more in a minute, I guess. Enter the request tent. Let's take those requests, Mister Zach. I've had it. I've had enough. Night after night, week after week. Those those salters. Isaac, some decorum, please. Apologies. I cannot take their presence any longer. Loud, disruptive, and the mess they leave behind after dinner. I just want some peace and privacy. Is that too much to ask? Captain, I implore you that relocate me to another tent. Anywhere else as long as it's far away from them. Well, close to the kennels. <laughs> if it's so important to you, then you will be moved elsewhere in the camp. Oh, thank you, Captain. I won't be a hound all entire winter with that law. Really, Templeton? You don't want your scientists to be in a better spot? 
Captain, hate to do this, but you mind moving me to a new spot? It's getting awfully cold and these old bones are starting to crack. I'm not owed special treatment. I'd like to be move, move closer to the boiler for warmth. Everyone is cold, Lefty. It's no good reason to move. Ah, uh, I see no problem with that. Are you going to hate me again? The winter's been harsh. Shaw, Templeton, need to do something about Arthur. Arthur, the doctor. Right, yes, Dr. Nutley. I wasn't aware Dr. Nutley was proven issue. Uh, what do you mean, Grimley? Since winter started, he seems unwell. I think the pressure's starting to get to him. I'm surprised to see you coming up with to us with this issue. I didn't take you to show concern to a high-class landborn. He's a good lad, means well. Besides, he's part of the crew. I picked him out. Well, it's no secret that the good doctor carries a nervous temperament. Do you think it's beginning to affect his own health? I'm not alone. Junior, Belfort, and Darlene all think so too. That's quite noticeable. Don't worry, Grimly, I'll have words with him. Good. Better sooner than later talking to him. Lad's barely hanging in there. Captain Templeton. I heard through the grapevine our good doctor is having a spot of bother. He, you may just be able to help. You know the boy well, don't you? I should say so. How long have we been on the ice together now? Might be the right man for this job. We're concerned by the doctor's temperament. He's slowing down in his work and may threaten stopping altogether. Well, his own health comes above his work, wouldn't you agree? Both are a matter of grave importance. You will speak with him then? Hmm. Afraid that might be on me, Richard. What? Kurt's right, Templeton. He's not the man for the job. It's Captain Duties to consult the crew. Right, you are, Robin, but it's not just that. I've spoken with the lad quite a bit, but I've made it. Never made it through to the boy. Tough nut to crack. Might not have the right disposition for it. Too soft, I say? Excuse me. You treat him too softly. The young man's a doctor. He does not to be handled with gloves. But he needs someone to remind him of the duty behind his role. No sugared words. You want Shaw to approach with a saw? You said it yourself. The gentle method proves ineffective. I said no such thing. No use arguing this. We'll see what fares best when I have words with the man. Understood. I suppose that what presents itself in the moment is best. Yes. No good playing with hypotheticals, is there? Trust your judgment, Captain. Best leave the talk until after dinner. No need to interrupt his work further. Please let us know how you fare, Captain. Best of luck. Read. If... Oh, piss off. <laughs> so many holes. We gotta fix them. All right. I was meant to ask, Mr. Templeton, what precisely is your area's specialties? Botany. Odd. How so? Botany is the study of plants, correct? Not a abundance of plants on the ice. Meteorologist, biologist, I understand, but why were you chosen? Much wider range of knowledge outside of my field. I was chosen to be the head scientist of this expedition. By the benefactor, correct? Yes. Which reminds me, just who is this benefactor of ours? I ask Hunt often, but he always avoided the question. He avoided most of what was asked of him. You asked too many questions, Miss Belford. Exactly what Hunt said. You seem adamant not to answer. Do not see it as relevant information. Everything is relevant, Mr. Templeton. You can only hide secrets for so long. Let's see about that. She's not wrong. Alright. Where's our frostbitten people? Done. Okay. We need... Oh man, why is it doing that? Alright. One, two, three, four. They set to work. One, a two, a three. I guess nomads can. Right? Okay. Um... Exit the canopy. I'd like to send out the singular scout right now. And then hunt with the other two to get as many freaking penguins as we can. Okay. 
And that's that, right? So the furnace... <sighs> I'd like to not use those until we absolutely need to, which might be now. 55... 67... Man, that's rough. Okay. Call the crew for dinner. The crew have their meal. Crew returns to the post. Long dark continues. Okay. Nutley. What's going on with you, bud? Ah, uh, Captain. Um, is there an issue? I hope not. It's time to evaluate your work so far. We need to talk, Doctor, or the crew's worried about you, Arthur. The crew's worried about you, Arthur. Oh, right. Captain, I must apologize. For what? I know I'm not what you would have asked for in a ship, Doctor. I'm nervous. My mind is often scattered in the sight of blood. Well, it makes me faint. Harley Cole... Qualities befitting a surgeon, are they? You're a fine surgeon nonetheless. Captain, there's something I must confess. The reason Hunt took me on against all other candidates, well, because of my father. I'm wondering if Kurt's his dad. Your father? Yes. Well, he's he. No, oh, my father was Hunt's barber. Oh, okay. Well then. Well, just the way he was talking about Kurt and the, how many kids he had and things, I was wondering if he was like that. Um, they were quite friendly, and well, my father called in a favor. Some favor that proved to be who would sign her up for this work. You know that for certain? Or you think it's more likely that Hunt was paying with his barber um, than the simple fact that you earned the work? You think it's more likely that Hunt was repaying his barber than the simple fact that you earned the work? Yes. Ahem. Uh -huh. Sorry. My father was so proud when I took this expedition, believed it could finally toughen his boy up. He was always obsessed with that, no matter what I did. For him, it always came back to how tough I was. Or wasn't. But you can see how well that worked, can't you? Sure. <laughs> I've had no issues with your work. Captain, yeah, there's no need to protect my self-work. I know where I stand. Some of the crew have been quite kind to me. Too kind. Whether it's harsh words from Templeton or pats on the back from Kurt, their eyes are all the same when they look at me. A burden, a mouth to feed. You've convinced yourself of that, Arthur. It's a self-defeating it. You're no burden. You're the only doctor. So, prove them wrong. But, I don't believe they are. I've tried, but I have to accept it. My cowardice leaves me a drain on the crew's resources, selfishly so. Perhaps it's better off... Better of me to... You best not be suggesting what I think you are. At least stop this, you're talking nonsense. You best not be suggesting what I think you are. I... No, I'm not. Of course I'm not. Huh, I suppose I've been acting foolish. Yes, yes you have. Now isn't the time to lose my nerves, what remained of them. I'm, I'm sorry for worrying you, Captain Knight. He walks off, making his way back to his tent. Clearly, much is on his mind. Agreed. Much is on his mind. Two Johns, wait till you hear this. The winter's finally taken Tucker. Oh, what now? It's nothing. And so lonely, he started talking to a woman on the tin cans. She's got an elusive look. It's a bloody drawing, Tucker. But what's her story? Once upon a time, someone in need put a face on a t <laughs> their tin peach can. The end. Don't take Tucker to one of them calories. He'll lose his bloody mind. All right, that's enough. We're not even halfway through the winter yet. <laughs> it's funny. Why are you so pressed up against the lamp? Trying to read. Too dark for anything like that. Hmm? It's near home, are you? Wherever that is. How long now? We can hope. Captain, I've heard mutterings along the crew that have raised concern to appear that our rations of tobacco are finally running dry. Crew have already been on the edge since the beginning of winter. I doubt this will improve matters. Mr. Hammond and the sailors have been awfully fond of the leaf. We even spotted them trading some of their food rations for more of it. Ridiculous, I know. 
I never understood why tobacco was amongst, included amongst the tinned rations in the first place, so waste one could have included more food. Agreed there. I doubt the crew will agree with you, Captain. If you ask the sailors, no doubt they will credit it as a key to their survival. That lot are quite addicted to it. The simple plant carries much, so much control over them. Personally, I never cared much for it. I tend to avoid any substance that could affect my body chemistry. Agreed. Still, I have an odd respect for the leaf. There's something uh, admirable about a plant that can steer human behavior so strongly. No wonder our benefactor sought wise to supply them in abundance. Tobacco, tin foods, our benefactor has their hands in many affairs, don't they? They managed to produce so much tobacco in the first place, or... I've heard the sailors complain about the quality of tobacco, yet they'd smoke a... No, let's do that one. Benefactor has their hand in many affairs, don't they? Appertins are not content with being a simple tin food company. No, nope, they're building an empire. Just as they funded this expedition, so too have they funded countless ventures, countless discoveries. It's how their business operates. Do you believe they were simply fortunate enough to have peaches grow in their back garden? You sound more ambitious than your average fruit salesman. It's almost concerning. It seems to me they make their living stealing from others. Of course, I'm not naive. Of course I'm not naive. Of course not. May have your doubts, Captain. I understand that. Do I approve their eagerness to mine natural resources, sell them uh, off at the cost they do? No. However, I understood that modification is the vehicle to scientific study. I have all the money I need to research these plants. I've seen several breakthroughs and discoveries that would not be possible without their financial aid. If in return I must provide them with a commodity to mass produce to send and sell off, then so be it. I consider that a mutually beneficial arrangement for all involved. I see where you're coming from, Templeton. The good outweighs the bad. Glad you understand that, Captain. I find the nuance of the arrangement is lost on most of them. My apologies. It's not like me to ramble on like this. I suppose the tension of this winter has begun to affect me as well. Perhaps a cigarette would even help even myself. Or perhaps I simply need a good night's rest. Good evening, Captain. A good night's rest. That's probably the best thing. Alright. Let's see how it's like one more week in this hole. Alright, we're keeping it going for as long as we can like this. Three Emperor Penguins. That's nice. Nomez, you're fine. Flick is freezing again. Nah, man, I really need Flick. Eight weeks at third camp. Okay. This will probably be the last one for this session, too. The last week here, so let's... Let's have a talk to everyone, Hammond and Templeton. Mr. Hammond, in my hands is a write-up I have been working on over the winter, intended for our benefactor. Be good work for you to have a look over the material, let me know if there's anything missing. Aye, sure thing. Oh, without tripping oil anywhere, if you can, my research is quite important. My work isn't? Of course it is. Do you attempt to clean your hands, at least? With what? Bloody ice water? I'm sure, I have a cloth somewhere. Here, take this as your own. Aye, thanks. And cloth is actually embroidered by... Don't care. <laughs> Very blunt. Um, winter can't be over soon enough. This is the longest I've gone without any proper exercise. Well, winter has granted me plenty of time to read by lamplight. Perhaps one should use this time to exercise their mind instead. Hells. What? It's the most obnoxious thing you've said so far. It's also impressive. Almost impressive, I should say. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's get here. And a request we have today. Rent. Captain, could you move me into a new tent? I'm stuck with my dad all winter. Thought it proper to place you with family. I'm not a child. Most certainly are. I don't need him looking over my shoulder all the time, sir. Need your own space then? Aye. Can you, Captain? 
Um, quite has to move people at this stage. Can you not wait it out? How much longer is left of winter anyway? Best you not know. Yeah, that's one of the easier ones to be like, no, he can't move. Captain Templeton. Mr. Higgs, uh, call me Tucker. Mr. Higgs is fine. Something you require? Must be nerve-wracking in here all day. Well, I say, can't tell what time it is anymore. Suppose not, but must fry your head, Captain, does it? What, Templeton? You can be quite the bother. Is there any point of any of this, or you just bother? It's not too bad, I've grown used to it. I suppose it's been long enough now. Sorry, Mr. Higgs, did you come here as a quest? Days barely exist anymore. Nothing to do around here but pass the hours. So you have nothing to request? No. Simply may come here to make idle chatter? Aye, nothing better to do. Aye, hmm, Captain? You should brace this free time while you can. It won't last. Go play cards with the others. Yeah. It'll be the 50th game this week, Captain. But I, I'll not keep you from your work any longer. Seems winter's beginning to take its toll on the crew. Should take great care to ensure they keep their minds active. We will still have a great deal of work to get through. Captain Shaw, I... Oh, goodness. You're out of breath. Calm yourself. Is it an emergency? Well, I... This might sound mad. Help with it. I saw it. Clear as day. Looked out in the snow and I saw it. What? The Bonnier. Well, Captain, next order of business is... I'm not joking. No, it sounds mad, but I saw it. Twelve feet tall, covered in thick, bushy white hair. Such a creature exists, the winter's clearly got to you. Thought my eyes were playing tricks on me too, but what if they weren't? What if there is a beast like that? If we caught it, feed us for three winters. No, four. Suggesting a winter hunting party. We won't travel far, Captain. Think about it. Far too dangerous for a simple whim? Go see Dr. Nutley. Work the 30th, clearly. Far too dangerous for a simple whim. Absolutely not. But, Captain, that's enough. We'll not hear another word of it. Very well. Yeah, we're not chasing after, like, Bigfoot in here. Come on, now. You done with that book yet? Almost. You want to trade? All right. You'll need to send it back to Mr. Zack when you're done. Okay, you have to return this Dr. Nutley. That's funny. Two, three, and four. Okay. Well, it looks as though we could do this just with one of them to heal those two. Meaning, we could go to here, send Flick out, seals. Oh, this is much better game. Leopard seals. Okay. And these ones here, or do we just go out on a farther hunt? Probably could, just to see. Oh, nice, even better. We have a few people left over, but I also don't really want to make people frozen too much here but we need so much more we need everything is the issue like we need everything <laughs> okay i guess we're going out um where's the Make sure we pet the dogs every day. We have no fish to feed them. We actually can't go out. Alright, done. There we go. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Shoot. Well, I guess we are cooking up more of those then. Whoops, my bad. 
Um, yeah. We might as well do this while we're at it. Boy, old man, today's your birthday, isn't it? Surprised you still know what day it is. But I, those, these bones grow even colder. Can't imagine what surprise you have planned. I actually asked Grimly to carve a wooden whale for you before we set off. Oh, and where is it? Been down with the ship. Har! Well, at least it's thought that counts. It's not wrong. Okay. If we... Do this. Why does it do that sometimes? Brings us up to 34. Hmm. 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 Like, I don't know how... how much more we can do here. Really not eating to tonight, that's for sure. Okay. Crew have their meal. Well, I guess it's just Nutley. As you step to the tent, you notice Nutley approach. Captain, I've been thinking a great deal over the last while. Thank you to speak with me for when you did. I, I needed that. It certainly made this expedition more difficult than it had right to be through my previous cowardice. For that, I'm sorry, Captain Shaw. Would you be sorry? I'm happy to see some sense. Nutley, not a single one of the crew has doubted you. We owe you a great debt. I wonder how my father's doing. On the other side of the world, I wonder if he's thinking of me. My mother, my sister, too. There's so much I must return to. Um, Captain, if I may, fail to make it back to the world, would you please bring this letter to my father? Take the letter. Give him a nod. Doctor gives you a nod back. Thank you, Rob. I hope I won't need to deliver this. So he gives you a nod and... No, I'm not reading the freaking letter. That seems a terrible choice. Hmm, I've noticed something. What is that? Looking at some of the older photographs, a few of the dogs have grown quite a bit since we first landed. Been here quite some time, yes? Be interesting to see the time lapse. Do not expect the rest of us to grow taller as well. Ha! Huh. But that reminds me. I've never interviewed you yet. You might just be the most interesting member of the crew. I'm not a member of the crew. There's no need to interview me. I disagree. Is that so? There's too much I'm curious on. What led to dog handling? Why the accent? Why are you Lady Cordell? You recall the figure of speech regarding curiosity and the cat, yes? But you're more of a dog person. That was a joke. I'm aware. I take it then you're not interested in <laughs> my questions? Not in the slightest. Understood. Too bad. Is so winter over yet, Dan? Oh, you're sick of it, eh? I was sick of it when it started. I wanted to move. Not much longer now, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll see. It's like, do we put this in just so that there's freaking something in there? Maybe, I guess. And that's gonna be that. This is gonna hurt. Quite badly. A little bit of starvation. A little bit of freezing. A little bit of starvation. A little bit of freezing. Not quite the same for uh, Mambo number five, is it? <laughs> well, some people are going to get free become freezing, someone's going to get malnourished, but at least we're not dead. That's the biggest thing. And if they're only all freezing, maybe wounded, it's okay. It could be worse. That kind of sucks. But that's 
out of everything that happened here, this is this is not so bad. And we're heading into the week 32. But with that, we are going to end it here. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.